found you can hear me? Uh, no, uh, no, I can, I can hear, hear every sound, every sound on my microphone. Make a little bump, bump and, and oh. knock, knock and, and tap. tap. Good, good morning, morning, everybody. everybody. Yeah. All right. I always I always good afternoon, morning. Jason. But it's all technically afternoon. I have a double my echo there as well too. So, good afternoon, everyone, on this bright, sunshine, warm Monday, headed into September 11th. Um, we have we have. Man, I just, I feel like last week, I don't know if it was because we were all sick, but I feel like it has been a year <laughs> since we've <laughs> talked. Like, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it feels like it's been ages ago. Uh, it feels like there's a million things that have transpired since then, and it uh, we're just playing catch up on everything. Um, we've had a lot of more questions come in. A lot of people have gotten their school years started by now. Some are well on their way and that's, that's all like very exciting, but the questions keep pouring in. Uh, some of them, we, we know the answers to, and some we are working hard to find the answers to, and some of them have nothing to do with us, which is awesome. <laughs> to get and some of them, we didn't even know there was a problem. <laughs> yeah, true. True. But, but such is the nature with change, right? You, you exactly. have a plan for what's coming and then, um, you adapt as best you can as you go, and you continue to make those changes to smooth out things you didn't even see coming. So a lot of things you can see coming, some you can't. But good morning, afternoon, Brenda. Good afternoon, Brenda. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. And good afternoon, Crystal. It feels like good forever afternoon. since I've seen you. It's been a whole <laughs> couple minutes. Okay. Uh, all right, so we've got some questions that are coming in from PEP. I don't have any coming in on the stream yet. I'm gonna I watch the comments. As of right now, I don't see any coming in, but we do have some kind of pressing ones that have shown up. So go ahead and dive into that with us, Crystal, or, or set it up. Okay, so the big ones that we're seeing come in right now are questions about extracurriculars for public schools and issues that people are running into with the districts and just the logistics of getting them set up in the system. Um, and then also we've had some information coming in about concerns with dual enrollment, where colleges are telling them that they're not doing dual enrollment for PEP. Um, and then the third thing that I think we're gonna hit today is um, people are getting emails from Step Up saying that they are owners of a school. Um, and so we kind of wanna just hit that that's a step up issue that you're going to need to communicate with them. But I do have at least one person that provided me kind of a reason of maybe why they were getting that. So we'll kind of hit that as well. Um, cool. So I don't know if we want to start with the extracurriculars thing and kind of go from there. Well, my dashboard was stuck. It hadn't, I don't know why, whatever the internet was doing, uh, froze. So I didn't see, we've actually got a million questions coming in, <laughs> which is nice. exciting. Um, We'll, we'll take it however you want to take it, uh, whichever way you want to dive into questions first or after. Um, yeah, let's dive into the issues Crystal brought up first, and Do then that. we'll take questions. Do that. I'll start making notes on some of these coming in and put them in an order. So if you guys have questions, keep asking them, but we're going to go ahead and dive into what Crystal has, and I'll keep track of both and bring us back. Go ahead. You want me to start, Brenda? Yes, or? Okay. Well, <laughs> let, let me start with the ones that I Introduce know uh, and have had some input on. Um, we had um, someone talk about the policy with Alachua County saying they were not going to participate in PEP this year. So I reached out to a couple of people in Alachua County, uh, had some great discussions with the district people, and uh, late Friday afternoon, I got a call from one of the assistant uh, superintendents and she explained the reason why they are not going to take PEP students this year and it made perfect sense to me. The districts are trying to cooperate but by the time this bill went into effect July 1, it was so late in the school year that they already had their contracts written for uh, dual enrollment and all of the other issues that they have to have uh, mechanisms in place. So here's their issue. They have no contract with Step Up. And as you know, Step Up has been working madly trying to get this program in place 
with a new computer system, with um, uh, just trying to educate everybody in the call centers and work out all the details. So everybody's been working very hard to try to implement the program. But there were some unforeseen things that people didn't realize had uh, caused problems until they started dealing with the individual parents and trying to figure out how to make it work. So DOE has not given the districts a code to put in for PEP students because they can't put them in as home education students and they're not public school students. So we know that they're not going to be one of the vendors or providers on the step up list, even though early on we saw from uh, previous years with FESUA that there were some districts that were on there as a provider list. The problem is, and this is way deep in the weeds and people probably don't need all this information, but I want them to understand how complicated implementing a new program like this is. So FESUA students enrolled as home education students so they could serve them in the district with the code in their computer for the kids. They have to have them listed somewhere for insurance purposes. They have to know how to build the state for those students. Well, PEP students are in a different funding system that is private and not public. So they can't put them in their computer without some direction from DOE. That involves yet another department at DOE and the money will be coming from step up or AAA, not from the department. So, these are situations that have not occurred in the past. Originally, the uh, DOE was handling the funding issues for the uh, McKay students. And so that was through the public schools and they had a way of handling that. I just don't believe that people foresaw these details that come about at the last minute and the districts are struggling with, well, we want to serve the kids, but we don't have any mechanism for putting them in the system. And they don't make up the codes. They have to follow what the codes are issued by the department. So yet a, a different section than the choice office in DOE. So I'm hearing, and Crystal, you've heard that, that students are also having some concerns with the state colleges um, having the same issue with dual enrollment. Now, my first thought was we'll be okay with the students doing extracurricular activities if it doesn't involve a class. But now I'm leaning toward here after hearing what the um, assistant superintendent said in Alachua County. I'm not sure they will even know how to code those kids because they have to have them uh, they have to have them covered for insurance. I don't know if it's possible for them to enroll them part time as a home ed, as a um, public school student. Those are things that we're going to have to figure out, and maybe some districts have it figured out. But the assistant superintendent told me that. They had talked about 12 counties. They're all struggling with how to handle this. So if you want to add something to that, Crystal, now is your opportunity. <laughs> um, the only thing I really have to add is that this is all a temporary issue, right? So this is everybody trying to figure out how to implement the things that need to be implemented, not that this is going to always be an issue for PEP. Um, but for this first year, and especially for this first quarter, but for this first year, um, these are the issues as the logistics kind of just become, as people become aware, <clears throat> like Brenda said, these are details that they didn't necessarily realize were going to come into play. And now they're kind of in that situation where they 
don't have time to figure it out before the school year got rolling. So um, there is something, something called a glitch bill, which I'm sure Brenda will talk about in a minute. Um, and there are ways that they're going to try to work out these logistics, but this is the situation that we're in right now with the council. So my counsel would be, and you can work it out however you want to. Um, I know the FHSAA has forms already for PEP students. The districts are supposed to be um, doing the validation for the PEP students on the uh, teams that they participate in, and maybe there's no money involved for extracurricular activities. There may be some real problems for students that want to participate in band or ROTC or some of those uh, activities that are extracurricular activities that involve a class. So if you have not received your funding for this year, and you have a student that falls into this category, check with your district and see what they're going to do and how they're going to handle it and that you don't end up coming up uh, not able to participate. You can always fall back to the home education program this year and then um, next year uh, reapply for the scholarship for the PEP once we get the details worked out. But just to be on the safe side, um, I think that would be the best thing. Bright Futures is not involved with money, so I don't think that one is in jeopardy. Um, and I think there will, I'm, I'm pretty sure there will be a glitch bill because uh, I haven't heard directly from any legislator or staff. But if you send us your comments, I, I sent an email to um, House Education staff on actually last night to inquire from them um, if they know how to handle this detail and if not put it on their radar screen for a glitch bill. So I'm sure there will be a number of things that are going to crop up because all of the other statutes that relate to the um, privileges that home education students have were not amended during the session, so they really need to amend those and put home education students and PEP students in those statutes. So I wish we had known this sooner. Um, I had no clue because the law does specifically say PEP students have the same uh, freedoms and flexibility as, or it says flexibility and opportunity, as do home education students. So that's the law. Mm -hmm. Some of these issues that filter down to even after you apply for one of the PEP scholarships, I have no way of knowing what those issues are. And we're so grateful that Crystal has a handle on that because there's some details below what I know that involves being a participant. Same thing with dual enrollment and extracurricular activities. Until a parent hits those um, issues, we don't know their issues. And um, that's exactly why I started working back in 1994 to help create laws for um, home education students that couldn't participate in extracurricular activities right. at um, a public school or a private school because I ran into the issue as a parent and my child couldn't participate. And so we never got the right while he was still in high school for him to be able to participate. But it took a couple of years and now we have that and it's a free opportunity for home education students. So unfortunately, some of these things take two or three years to get all the details worked out. Mm -hmm. And that's it's un, it's unfortunate that time keeps ticking while we <laughs> pause to work on some of these things. Um, and that's the nature of it. I think that uh, some of the parents are going to experience frustrations with um, the the rollout simply because legally the 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 legality and the legislation happened first which marked the impetus of it but then 
everything has to play catch up. A lot of, like you said, a lot of the contracts had already been signed and written and ready for the upcoming school year by the time Je July 1st hit and enacted the new legislation. So everybody, a lot of people, a lot of the colleges that we're hearing feedback from through parents are saying, well, we haven't even heard of PEP or what is PEP? And they're having to play catch up. So of course they can't, couldn't have written it into their system. Now it's got to be coded. Where does that fit into coding? And everybody's got to adapt. And then they have to figure out how to inform all of the teachers which of these students go where and how they're coded this way and that way. And they've got to have an internal education rollout for some of this stuff to to get everybody on board. There's there's a lot of moving parts. And it's unfortunate that all of those moving parts take time to get them synced up and moving. But it kind of is what it is. You were going to say something, Brenda. Yeah, I also talked to uh, Florida Virtual School and while they're still serving students, they have a huge issue on the back end for payment. And they were in the process of writing a contract with Step Up so that they got funding for those students when uh, this legislation went into effect and their contract went out of the out of the window. They were having a problem with home education students and uh, FESUA students prior to this. But by the time you get both of the organizations together to discuss the contract and agree on that, then at least with the school districts and the state colleges, they have to bring those policies or contracts before their attorneys and then the school board. And so, you know, the school board, you have to wait till the next meeting of the school board. It's just time consuming, mm -hmm. uh, even if they're working as hard as they can. So the logistics for this year um, are going to be probably not worked out until next year, to be honest about it. Florida yeah. Virtual was not getting fully paid for those students before because of the quarterly funding. That, that was their issue. And they only get paid on completion. So if a student enrolls in September but doesn't complete the course until after the fourth quarter payment, then All right, so the virtual doesn't get any money. A concern came in just now, a question. So I'm gonna pipe this one in real quick because it's about this. They, she, She's saying on the way that, that you stated it, she says they add PEP to home education. Oh, it keeps bouncing around. When they, If they add PEP to home education, uh, then we're in big trouble. I only caught half of what was said. So uh, let's, careful about what? making assumptions, but I only call it half of what was said regarding amending to add PEP. What is that about? Okay, let, let me clarify. Maybe yes. I wasn't specific enough. The home education law will not be amended. We're not, we're not going to amend that. It will stay in place. There the problem is that the privileges that we have been given are, for example, extracurricular activities. Home education is in statute 1002.41. Mm -hmm. The rights and, and implementation of extracurricular activities is in statute 1006.15. So we will have to amend statute 1006.15 to have another section that relates to PEP students. So we'll have home education, Florida Virtual, they've all copied the original home education. Right, wording. and I think that's very and important. Charter schools, and then we'll have to have a section for PEP. Is that when we're talking about updating it with the glitch bill, we're not talking about changing the home education law, but the PEP, the legislation for PEP references a large amount of the home education law. So that that's what we're talking about when we're speaking about that updating it. Yeah, the so, the statutes for PEP reference a whole bunch of other statutes, <laughs> right. and so those statutes those statutes things. have not been updated in the the other direction to reference PEP. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. So so <clears throat> for example, let's because I kind of know how this one is going to work. 
I talked mm -hmm. to the executive director of the FHSAA and we went back and forth and they went with DOE and we finally decided how that was going to be handled and they came out with a form. So there's a form for the PEP students to fill out. But the districts now are going to have to validate that when the child comes to the school to participate in the extracurricular activities. So it's going to be up to the individual schools. So that mechanism of how that's going to work needs to be put into the section of law that relates to extracurricular activities so that they give the, the sequence of how that's supposed to work and how that's to be implemented over in that section of law. Same thing with dual enrollment uh, uh, scholarship. That's in section 1009.25. So that one is going to have to be amended because we've worked it out for home education students and private school students, but we haven't worked it out for PEP students. Mm -hmm. So the people that implement those other activities or privileges, they were given no direction in this statute, none. So that's where we're running into problems because the um, colleges have to submit to the DOE the names of the students that took um, dual enrollment classes and how much the DOE owes them under that scholarship for the um, tuition and fees for that dual enrollment course. Does that make sense? Yeah, to me it does. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so we've got a lot of questions coming in to switch gears a little bit. We've got a lot of questions coming in and um, the good news is they almost all have to do with the same topic. So oh, good. <laughs> We could maybe knock out several of them in one go. But before we do that, we started with a different graphic this morning. I know I know that many of you who are watching saw the starting soon graphic that we roll. My music wasn't working. I know some of you are happy about that. So we'll <laughs> celebrate the little victories. That, uh, but on that, there were, we put our top five. Our, we have a program in place for corporate sponsors who are wanting to receive tax credits for marketing dollars that they can spend in visibility and marketing everywhere the same way that they would spend money on billboard advertising or tv spots they can spend their money here and they can gain visibility on our website the forums um, the live streams etc and they can all write it off as a marketing expense while supporting lobbying for home education so if you know of a good corporation that wants to receive that kind of tax break uh, they can throw their money in this direction as we've set up all those tools for them. And you'll have seen at least one of them is FPEA, and they are now listed on the starting slides. And they'll, we'll list them again at the end, but I wanted to give them a shout out before we move into our Q&A section to kind of break things up a little bit. Um, and now we'll dive right into those. If you're ready, are you ready, Brenda? Sure. I'm ready. Okay, cool. Um, so here's question. questions, clarification on... What exactly they want documentation wise in order to show three years relative experience? And then question two, update on applicants versus spots available for PEP. Um, I asked for an update this morning on the number of uh, slots still available. Uh, I have gotten no reply back, okay. unfortunately. Um, the next call that I will be on, which is at one o'clock, will give us that information. So Crystal will be posting that in the forum as to how many confirmed PEP students there are as of this date after our call, because I won't get that information until after our call. Okay. Uh, someone just said, um, St. Petersburg College is saying that since our semester has begun, our PEP dual enrollment students should be fine to finish the fall semester, I guess since they've already been accepted. Um, <clears throat> but there may be an issue next semester. Does that make sense or should I be concerned that my student will have to withdraw mid-semester? We will give you more information as that unfolds. As, we, as, we, as it unfolds, yeah. I, if they're accepted, 
That's great, though. Stay tuned uh, next yeah. week. How do we submit a ticket to fix the error? Uh, I got an email. Oh, okay, it's about the email. We'll go back to that. Um, but Christmas Jane, thank you for thank you from FPE8. Hey, Tracy, awesome. Yeah, thank you as well. We appreciate it. Um, she says thank you for these webinars. They're really really helpful. We really appreciate it. Um, there is okay. So let's dive into the, this next one because it's the one that everybody keeps commenting on, which is throwing me off. So we'll get to it, and then we can perhaps catch up on all the comments. I'm agreeing. All right, so da, 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 da. we were given a deadline. No, there it is. Hello, I got an email today, and so did lots of other people who have been commenting nonstop here that says, quote, by law, a student is not eligible for PEP if their parent or guardian is the owner or operator of a school. Our records indicate this is the case for your family, meaning that your student is not able to be moved to PEP. If this is not correct, please let us know using our contact information below, end quote. Um, she says, but I'm not sure what this means. Then a lot of other people have been commenting saying, I got the same letter, I got the same letter. Um, someone even said I, there was a field for putting in school, a school name, and I just made up a name and put it in. Is that maybe what caused this? Sorry, my mic is very low. Is that maybe what caused this to to trigger um what does that mean uh, some other people are saying i've been on i've been on hold with uh step up for students for the last 30 or 40 minutes some say i'm, I'm in the facebook chat with them right now and the facebook person says this uh, waiting they're waiting on their end to get it updated and they need more information uh they'll roll out emails i guess to to answer that but i didn't know if you had any insights crystal on your end i know you've seen that question come in yeah, so the only insight I have, I think it is possible that maybe if you made up a school name and put it there in the box, that could be triggering this. The other issue that I've seen is uh, someone reached out to us and said that they received that message a, a week or two ago. Um, but they are the treasurer of a co-op. It's not a school. It never was a school. They don't own a school. But because somewhere in the records or information somewhere, it came up that they are on the board or whatever of this organization that I guess was interpreted as a school. And so I, I advise them to reach back out to step up and explain that it's not a school, it's a co-op. You may yeah. have to do a little bit of education to, uh, to explain to them what a co-op is um, in that you don't own, in fact own a school. Yeah. Um, but if you made up a name, so on the step up application, yes, there was a section that they wanted you to put what school your child was transferring from. It was a box that was mandatory to fill in. Um, I think I put some version of homeschool. I just typed the word homeschool. Um, but if you made up a name for your homeschool or if you have a name for your homeschool, like Crawford Academy, for example, they may be misinterpreting that as you running a school. So I don't know if it's a combination of those two issues people are seeing or one or the other, but um, definitely in the email, it says, if this is incorrect, contact us. So that's what you're going to want to do. <laughs> definitely reach out to them and explain that you don't own a school um, and whatever yeah. your situation is, explain that to them. So someone just commented, Justin Foreman commented and said, uh, the step up chat just came back to him with this. I'm sorry, quote, I'm sorry that this email has been sent in error. There will be a correction email soon to follow as this is sent in error. I'm not sure about his circumstance and whether his matches everybody's. I don't know what is triggering it. Someone said My also guess? in here that they didn't unenroll their children yet from um, home education. And so they're wondering if maybe that was why they got sent the letter. Um, I honestly don't know. Uh, my guess, multiple... just from having been through the process of applying myself, um, mm -hmm. and I did not receive that email, my guess is that it might have been automatically triggered if you put a school name in that box. That's just my guess. Um, yeah, somebody said that they didn't, and they also got the letter. So Okay. I well, then I don't know. That was my only yeah. guess. <laughs> that was gonna, so that hopefully was it's going. just, I've been hopefully trying it's to just follow an the error. Yeah. Hopefully it's just one of those glitches, like the time that they denied everybody in the system and everybody panicked hopefully it's just a glitch that they're going to fix <laughs> yeah those things can be very disconcerting obviously because as you're not not sure 
what to think when you get it. Clearly, yeah. like follow up with Step Up. Uh, like Crystal said, give them the correct information. Um, know your legislative rights. That's why we do these every Monday to try to confirm for you what your what the what the legislation says, what you have the rights for, that you're on the right track to give you confidence to know, and all of those kinds of things. Um, it is reassuring, think, though, that chat is saying it's a glitch. So yeah. hopefully that means that it's something that they're already aware of and that they're on top of. Yeah. Well, I also think somebody else said, hang up the phones. Because <laughs> the response they keep getting is, uh, we'll, we'll know more, we'll know more. Um, the more that their lines get clogged up, like let them know, give them the information that they need, and then wait for the response. I think that's very important. Because the more that we bog them down, the slower it takes them to get to handling the actual issues which is very important everything takes time and if there's like a three thousand people waiting 30 minutes on on a queue uh, getting to every one of them that that's a, an immense amount of slowdown so email them back uh talk to them in their chat uh, if you have to call them call them but like make sure that you're when when it's the time where you're supposed to be waiting for your response just bite your fingernails pray and wait for your response. And Brenda, do you think this is something that you might be able to get clarity on when you speak with them later? Um, you know, just if whether this is a system wide glitch that just got triggered or if there's something else going on? Yes, I can get clarification on that. Once we get clarification on that, we'll we'll put a post up on the Facebook page as well. So let us know, Brenda, and we'll put a post up to kind of let people know what was triggering it. If, if we can figure that out, they may not know um, yet. <laughs> they're gonna know that something has been triggered because there's gonna be a million calls they're like what are these all about but uh anyway and while while we're on the topic of uh -huh. reporting issues that you're running into if if you're running into something um even if it's step up related but especially if it's legislation related like what's happening with the school districts right now um please reach out to us and let us know that that's happening because when Brenda is lobbying for all of these things and advocating for your, your freedoms and your rights and opportunities, if we don't know that something is an issue, we can't lobby for it. At, at least we probably wouldn't know to lobby for it. So um, please make us aware. There's, you can you know contact us through the website, send the contact form there. You can go into the forums, however you wanna do it, but please, make us aware if you're running into some of those situations so we can follow up on it. Yeah, Valerie says, I disagree, call them, clog the lines. The only way that they know to move on it quickly is if, I'm not saying don't let them know there's an issue. Let them know there's an issue, but there are many ways to do that that don't clog up phone lines. Um, one of those is to email them back at the contact information that they provide for you. So. I would be very careful about clogging up phone lines. I, from a person who operates a marketing company, it, the time and resources that go into those things is one of the biggest uh, wastes that a company experiences is uh, time spent fielding, fielding those calls and not time on task solving the problems. So yeah, if I understand what, what Jason was trying to say, it's reach out to them once and let them know mm -hmm. it's the problem. But and they, but try to resist the urge to keep calling them back to follow up um, because informing them that there is an issue, if they get a flood of hundreds of calls, then they know there's an issue. That's true. If they get a flood but, of th hundreds of emails, they get the same, like right. replies back. Yes. But it's, it's when people call over and over again on the same issue that it starts to just amplify the, uh, as Jason described it, the waste, but just the time that they're bogged down in calls that they can't, serve other people or do other things at that time. So. She says there, she's managed you mentioned the call center a chat. and sends a huge signal. Cool. Good. You Let me do it. Go ahead. Brenda? Um, you mentioned a chat or somebody yeah. did. Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. it is, oh, it's a Facebook chat. Yeah, no, with they, Step Up. Step Up they, chat, I think. Yep. Facebook, they have, they monitor their Facebook page chat as well, their messenger. That's a and good cool way to reach out. It's a great way to reach out. The cool thing about email and messengers is that they can all be categorized, right? The thing about calls is that the after reporting for calls has to go through a whole system of reporting the call and what was the call about and review the call. Whereas when the emails come back as a reply to, uh, everything gets categorized, super simple. So I don't wanna argue about systems and all that stuff. 
Uh, we'll, we'll move on. We've got other questions to answer uh, and get to. Um, I would say clog up their lines at your own risk. Um, you'll get faster answers if you don't, but do what you want to do. Uh, someone asked, we were given a deadline to terminate by August 31st. Is step up not enrolling my children with the government, therefore causing them to be non-compliant? Um, okay, so I'll take that one. Cool. Step up sent out an email, I want to say a week or two ago, extending the deadline to September 15th for submitting your student learning plan. And in that same email, it said, it referenced also terminating with your county. So my understanding is that they have extended the deadline to the 15th for both of those things. Um, if you are still waiting on confirmation for your status, then I understand why you wouldn't want to terminate yet. If you have been confirmed in the system as PEP, then please go ahead and send in your letter of termination because as they're doing all of the cross checks, it's going to just make things easier for them if you've already completed all those steps and they don't have to come back and say, hey, you haven't terminated yet. Um, so, but if you're still waiting, I understand why you wouldn't want to. My understanding is they've extended that deadline until the 15th, just based on that email they sent out. Good. <clears throat> Someone says, if we have been accepted into PEP and are not first tier, is there any is there a possibility of the cancellation of our PEP scholarship so that funds would be awarded to a lower tier family? Okay, I don't, maybe Brenda will have the answer to that, but I wanna, I wanna address the tier thing first because I've seen this um, in our forum and also in Facebook groups, people are categorizing themselves as tier one, tier two, tier three, which, um, I don't think is in statute anywhere, but I think what they're going on is the levels of priority. So when someone says tier one, they're usually referring to they're below that 185% of poverty level income, therefore they should have been given priority. Tier two is within the 400%, but above 185. And then tier three is they're above the 400%, so they had no priority. That's how I'm seeing that used, just for clarity for anybody else who's on this. Because those aren't tier one, tier two, tier three are not actual things broken down in statute in that way. Um, right. But I don't have an answer to the question itself. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. I, Brenda, do you know? Um, the question was that if they haven't received funding, can they withdraw so that the scholarship goes to no. somebody else? No, the question, the question was, is there a possibility of them being canceled for someone else who qualifies uh, because of their lower income? So for cl to clarify, they've already received a confirmation that they have PEP, Correct. but they're wondering because nobody's funded yet, they're wondering if it's possible if they might have that revoked in Correct. favor of giving it to someone who was the supposed yes. to be a priority. Okay. Yes. I have no uh, information about that, but I think that if you have been awarded the scholarship and everything is set up, I don't believe that you will be revoked. There was some information, wasn't there, Crystal, in filling out the application as to income? Yes. Um, that was part of the application process initially. and But the concern that I'm seeing from people is because they're, they're not going in a clear order at Step Up. So there are people who applied in May who were be below the 185% poverty level who haven't heard a confirmation. And then there are people who applied way more recently and are either above 185 but below 400 or even above 400% of poverty level and have already received PEP confirmation. So people are getting confused, understandably. Um, and also they're nervous because when they call Step Up, they're told, all kinds of different things from we're going first come first serve now we're not taking income priority then the people who applied earlier like well what happened to me um so i think there's just a lot of confusion and concern about the way the order that they're processing applications um the only insight i would have on that is uh just to make sure that the person that applied handled all the details of their application appropriately. I heard of one situation where 
uh, the, this was not PEP, it was FESUA, but they were denied because the parent accidentally uploaded a different child's birth certificate. So I know there's a whole lot of things that parents have to do, and it's possible that somewhere along the way that the parents who applied early didn't fill out mistake. something accurately. For example, we oh. just discussed the um, private school issue. Maybe you put in information that would have bumped you out of the order of selection because you put in your child was in a private school. Right. The other thing I have to add to that is uh, the last time I looked carefully at the wording of the statutes for PEP, it said that the one of the levels of priority mentioned that it was based on when you submitted your student learning plan. Like, I think it was in the section about when they would fund, how they would release funding. So it's possible that if you applied early but never submitted your student learning plan or didn't submit your student learning plan until much later, that people who submitted their student learning plan, like they may be considering that the completion of the application process in their system. I don't know for sure, but just kind of putting it out there that if you haven't done all the steps, um, and the steps as we know it are you apply first through the FESEO application portal, then you'll receive confirmation you've received that scholarship, then you'll receive a survey that you have to fill out saying that you want to apply your award toward PEP. There, there's a whole separate form you then have to fill out for PEP. Um, and it has you put in your award numbers that you were given for that first scholarship and transfer all that over into the form for each student that you're wanting to apply for PEP. And then there is inside StepUp's portal, a spot for you to submit your student learning plan. So you can do that student student learning plan uh, before you have received award confirmation for PEP. You can go ahead and do it. So if you haven't yet and you've been waiting for your confirmation, you may want to go ahead and just submit that in case maybe that's something that's preventing you from being fully processed in their system. <clears throat> that's good. So we do have uh, quite a, a couple of other questions that are really, really good ones. And we are running short on time for Brenda to make it to her one o'clock. So I wanna I wanna make sure that we get to these as much as possible. I know that a ton more questions and comments are pulling in as we go, but um, so I'll, I'll try to stay, I'll, I'll keep try to keep us on track is what I'm trying to say. I received a letter uh, from the Florida Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles on Saturday. Notice of intent to withhold eligibility to obtain a license. According to the document, I'm in non-compliance for school attendance. Uh, I terminated with the county after being awarded PEP, but the email, per the email on August 14th. Do you have any insight on this? That's another one of those agencies that we have got to do some education with. Mm -hmm. And that statute relating to driver's license has to be amended. So what's your, what's your insight on it? Um, what would you say? Who did the letter? I need them? to know who the letter came from. And if there's a person's name in there that I can contact, then sure. I will do that. Yeah. Do so this. It, Take yeah, that letter that and email that to us at info at F L H E F dot org info at flhef.org send us uh take a picture of it send it to us or if it came if there's an email copy of it or, or whatnot uh send it on over to us so that we can take a look at it and and find a point of contact to help with that so thank you that's good uh next question i was awarded pep on friday the 8th uh, and then just a few minutes ago i got the email stating my students cannot be moved to pep due to a parent as the owner of a school oh this is that question again i've been Hopefully that's just a glitch that will be resolved, but go ahead and reach out to step up just in case for uh, that person. One, another question that came in was a series of three. So one, how will PEP work with FLVS Flex? Right now, the classes are free for us. If we have to pay for them, how much will they cost? Uh, the only way that I can tell you that is to go to their global school, FLVS and their global school they will give you what the cost would be there. Right. Okay. And then two, how will dual enrollment work? 
It should work the same as home education students work. However, um, as I mentioned in the beginning of this call, there are some logistics to be worked out between the state colleges so that they can get their funding. So that I can't answer yet. Okay. And then three, yeah, well, I'll just keep us moving. Three, will they be required to take a test? If so, can the test be done at home? I'm not sure. For PEP? They're talking about, yeah, I don't know if they're talking about dual enrollment or they're just talking about PEP in general at this point. If they're talking about PEP in general, the answer is yeah. yes. And there's mm -hmm. a list of norm reference assessments that are approved by the DOE. Um, and the latest word we've had from the organizations, DOE and Step Up, um, is that they will go by whatever the test manufacturer's recommendations are. So if the test manufacturer says that it can be administered at home by a parent, then they will allow that. If it says it cannot be, then they will not allow that. So you'll need to find a test from the list that would allow for you to administer it at home if you want to do that. Somebody said that I think it's two, 267 per half credit with FLVS. Somebody else said flex classes are 267 per segment. So somewhere in that Brenda, range but you can go to the global site like what brenda said and get the exact um, brenda you looked like you were going to say something about the the other question um it was a fleeting thought <laughs> <laughs> well feel free to just throw it in there uh, and interrupt <laughs> if need be um another question says is there an advocacy group for pep specifically brenda uh um, we are we are not an advocacy group specifically for PEP. However, we have a whole section in our forum about PEP, and we are advocating for parents as it relates to legislation and your rights and freedoms and flexibility and opportunities that are, are in the statutes. Um, so we are a good resource for that. If you have something that you need advocated for in terms of those categories, um, but I don't know of any group that's specifically a PEP advocacy group. Good. We, we're getting the question a second time through, and that's Daylene asking, what exactly do they want to see paperwork-wise to prove three years relative experience? I'm not sure what that's in response to or connection to. I think I know um, just from discussions I've seen. That okay. is for part-time tutoring. If you want to have something classified under tutoring within the purchasing guide, that's the require one of the requirements. If they're not a certified teacher, you have to be able to show a certain number of years of experience in the field that okay. they're to that they're doing the instruction in. I don't know what the documentation for that looks like. I think that would be a step up question as to what they require for that documentation. Yeah. Brenda, do you have any insight on that? I do not. Oh, yeah. Not at this time. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely. That is a good question to clog up the lines. <laughs> and to add to know. add to that, to add to that, one of the concerns people are having is that they're wanting to get part time tutoring. They're wanting to put things under part time tutoring, like a piano instructor, but they're also wanting to put things under part time tutoring, like um, classes that they're taking online or something. So they're they're trying to find, you know, how what do I ask these instructors to provide for this? Right. What, to figure you know, out how. It seems invasive to ask an online tutor <laughs> to provide you three years of work experience. That's yeah. that's the discussion I've been seeing. So right. again, I think that's a step up question though, to ask them exactly what they are expecting there. Wait, you came to this job interview unprepared to, de to demonstrate <laughs> relevant experience? What are you talking about? No, I'm kidding. Uh, all right, so another person said, I'm just joining. You're speaking about extracurricular activities. Are PEP students allowed to play sports at a private school? Mm, yes, as long as you have an agreement with the private school. There's, Correct. If they charge you, it will be direct pay. Um, I'm not sure whether that can come out of your scholarship. I think it can. Um, what is your take on that, uh, Crystal? From would it need would they need to be an eligible private school in order for that to to work to come out of PEP funds? I believe so. Um, if it's extracurricular activities, I'm not sure. I think it would be direct pay from the parent for whatever the cost is for that. 
But as far as the FHSAA is concerned, they have a form to fill out and mm -hmm. that mechanism is already in place. Yes. Yeah. So it, that would mirror the home education uh, opportunity, though. Right. Um, yes. It's like one of those old fifth, like medieval mirrors. It's a little <laughs> fuzzy, not like a modern mirror. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things to think through before you say yes or no. Yeah, I hear you. No, I hear you. I hear you. It's a, it's a lot. Um, now, let me try to catch up because that is the end of. Uh, yeah, because this one. Well, hold on. OK, so I got an acceptance email Friday saying uh, to terminate my kids from the county. Uh, they, I think they said country, but I think they meant, I think they meant county. So I did this morning and then an hour ago, I got an email that by law, they can't be accepted. This is confusing. That's um, probably the same probably the owner same of the email. school email. I yeah, would okay. guess. Yeah, I think so, but it was just worded differently. And so I wanted to make sure. If not, oh. if, if that's not the email to that person who posted the question, if there's something else going on there and it's not the owner of the school email, just reach out to us and let us know, um, in case maybe there's something we need to look into there. But I I think it's probably that same glitch that others were reporting. Yeah, someone asked, uh, isn't there an agreement with FLVS Flex that once switched to PEP, the funds are available, the money will go directly to FLVS. I do believe that FLVS is direct pay approved. So that's accurate. Um, how often do we need to be, to how, bleh. how often, hmm. How often a year do we need to do the standardized testing? Once. Once. At the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm scrolling back up to catch. This group has been amazing. Uh, someone posted a, a group. Uh, let me cover this. Uh, we don't necessarily, I mean, like, join groups at your own risk. Obviously, this is people giving people information. Uh, and the accuracy of things like Wikipedia can be trusted and not trusted at the same time. So it's one of those things that just be careful that the information that you're getting has come through a vetted source that's accurate as well. Um, that is one of the reasons why we do these live streams. So while a Facebook group can be great, join it, have fun, connect, mingle, get help, make sure that you're also getting information directly from accurate sources as well that's why we do these streams uh yeah -E i don't know i was just gonna say i don't know what group they referenced in the chat but uh -huh. um if i know joanne stead runs a, a pep support group she's commented on she, here as well yeah she she actually is directly communicating with us and is referring people to these live streams and is double checking with us if she doesn't have the answer to something so mm -hmm. just to piggyback on what jason is saying some groups might be spreading misinformation. We saw that a lot early on. Um, so if you're in a group that you see that happening, uh, maybe reach out to me and I'll try to join the yeah. group so I can yeah, try to direct people to where um, they can get accurate information. And Jennifer so. Shaw says, agree, research the law too. One of the things that we do in the forum, if you've been to our forum, uh, flhef.org slash forum, there's a live community forum you can join. It's free, there's no cost to it. One of the things that we try to do is re make legislative references. It's a little difficult sometimes in live streams to do that with every single mention, but whenever it's on a forum and we have the time to put the links up and direct you to sections and things like that, it, it's, it's great. Um, somebody says they prefer forums to Facebook, that's fine too. Um, what we try to do is give, make the information available, but also demonstrably as accurate as possible so that people can have confidence in the information. It's not just people saying something. Uh, and, and I HGF, do go and I do go and update the forums as we get yeah, we monitor updated them information. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when we do get step up feedback or other feedback, uh, can we drop the link to there, please? Yes. Let me do that real quick, but you're going to hear my keyboard clacking. <laughs> It's just a forum. Right. Yeah, it's FLHF.org. I have one minute before I have to get on yes. my other call to get the information. I know. <laughs> You're here. Uh, Brenda, I don't have any additional questions coming through for you. So if you need to go, go. I'll wrap up the stream here. 
with everybody else. But I do want to I, I wanted to finish what I was saying about the accurate information thing. That is one of the reasons why we have Brenda uh, and our our home education lobbyists working to bring the information directly to our community. And we're building the community here on Facebook and on our website. So join it and get the information. But also that's the importance of having a lobbyist who's here to do these things for us. So we are not fully funded yet. If you do get a chance, flhef.org slash support, um, you can go there and we have a number of tiers. Those are tiers, Crystal, worded <laughs> correctly as tiers. Pick a tier of support that matches something that you're able to give to, whether it's five a month, 10 a month. Some people have given 50 a month or even 100 a month. And if you give 100 a month and you have a business that wants recognition, we'll put you on the recognition wall. Um, so there are perks for that as well. If you're a business owner, um, you don't have to have a directly home education related business to do that. Uh, we have somebody who had an, an electrical business that they're like, hey, we just love that our kids can home educate uh, here. Uh, and we're, we put them up on the recognition wall as well. So there are lots of opportunities for visibility for businesses when they get to a, a more substantial rate. But if you're a, a family that's struggling income wise like we have been forever like uh, we live on a tight budget uh five dollars a month as little as that uh goes a long way for us when we have 150,000 students across the state that that we're working to support um and then and if you did the math we'd be well funded if everybody at least did something so anyway we do appreciate it hopefully once funds start coming in we can adjust our budget to help donate that's awesome thank you Shar. we really appreciate that uh, did you answer the dual enrollment question? Yes, we did. Uh, we should Brenda, let Brenda go. Brenda, <laughs> love you. Leave us. I know you have a call to be on. Thank you for being on. on Thank you, thing. Brenda. So, that does make your head huge and uh, difficult for me. So I've got part of your face here, part of your face. Let me, wait, wait, wait. I can do this. Hold on. <laughs> Hold, I, I can fix it. I can fix it. No, I can't. That's okay. No, Let's I can't. just wrap up. We'll wrap up. Uh, I'll take us to our sponsors here. Uh, again, our top sponsors, we want to thank them as well, FPEA being first among them. Um, thank you all for being on the stream today. For dual enrollment, answer to that dual enrollment question, jump in the forum, please. Go to flhef.org slash forum. I, po I posted the link in there. Click on that. You'll get everything that you need to know uh, in that forum. There's so much information. Uh, we are out of time for the stream today. You can also uh, go back and rewatch what we've said so far in the stream in case we answered. Yes, you questions. can. These are all saved. Uh, I upload them to YouTube as well afterwards, but they're all saved uh, on our Facebook page for you guys to watch afterwards as well. Thank you all for being here. You guys are awesome. And enjoy your home educating life.